Hi folks, let's make two of these. What are they? They're Stevenson linkages, at least I think. Last time we did a Wednesday widget on a train part, we misspoke and said rail instead of tire, vice versa, and we were skewered for it. These are pretty cool though. This is a device that helps transfer rotary motion into linear motion to make a train go forward. These are obviously for a model train, but what I like about this, it's a pretty simple part, but we can't hold it in jaws. Why make two of them? Well, we're gonna make a little fixture plate and in Fusion, and on the Tormach, we're gonna G54 and G55 to make two at once. So enjoy some machining footage, stick around for the end. There's a lot of good little tips and tricks that we're gonna go over on the cam side in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Raw material, find some parallels. Second tallest set should work. I'll check my step down, but that should be enough. Open up our fusion code. Sort by modify date here at the top. There we go. Finding our left edge of the workpiece, if we take a look in Fusion 360, we can see our stock is modeled with our work coordinate system on the left and back edge. We'll also find the front of the rear jaw because that's coplanar with the back of the workpiece. And tool 99 for the Heimer is Z0 on the top of the workpiece, we'll jog down. To zero. Again, in Fusion, we can see our, our Z0 is at the top of the stock. Let's take a quick look at some of the Fusion 360 cam settings for the adaptive strategy. After we drilled the two holes for the link mechanisms, we also drilled a hole in the center of our part. And the only way to drill this hole, you think about it, we don't have a piece of geometry to select. So if you look at the geometry, it's selected points. So how do we do that? Go back into model, and if I expand my sketches of this component, our workpiece part, you can see I created a sketch on this top plane, the construction line, and a point at the center. And the circle here is a 0.25 inch diameter, just meant to show that I can easily fit a quarter inch drill in there. What that let me do by drilling that hole is an adaptive strategy with a much more aggressive helical ramp in. I still didn't want to plunge though, because I find that plunging can create some jerky motion when it starts at the very bottom. So we're still doing a helix, but it's way easier on the tool because you've got more room for chip evacuation. If you look closely, actually turn the part off, you can see that the helix is actually tapering down as it goes to the bottom, which helps keep the top of that open again to facilitate chip evacuation. How do we do that? Right click on our adaptive linking at a ramp taper angle. Now you got to be careful anything more than three degrees in this case would would violate the solid model and you'll get an error. So start simple and start adding that in gently. The other really important setting no engagement feed rate that way when you're doing these linking moves which are shown in yellow they're as fast as possible. Link in the video description to download the Fusion 360 cam for Patreon folks. We're also using templates here, which are awesome. Building our quick fixture, just a half inch piece of aluminum. I wanted to deck it off to keep it flat. This is the operation that I want to run twice. I want to run it at G54 location and I want to run it at G55. Fusion doesn't care where those two locations are. What I do need to do is tell Fusion to post both of those operations, meaning when I go to post processor, click post, we're running at G54 to start as well 
as that same adaptive at G55's location. There's a lot of ways to run multiple parts. There's patterns and CAD patterns, CAM patterns, or there's this multiple offset. So how do we get it to add that G55 location? Right click on the setup, edit. Under post process, I've checked multiple work coordinate system offsets. How many do I want? I want two of them and the increment is one, which means it goes 54 and then 55. And then operation order, you could preserve the order, which would, mean, which would mean it would finish the 54 before it goes to 55. But I'm gonna say, hey, do everything you can with one tool and then go on. So how do we set that up in PathPilot? Notice I'm in G54 on PathPilot. That's really important. This is a good way to crash your machine. I'm gonna jog over just to see about how far over is comfortable. I think I ended up at 4.25 inches. Yep, looks good. Plenty of area for the workpiece. So now this is really important. Go into your MDI and type G55. That's gonna switch PathPilot in to G55. And now I just hit X, Y, Z, zero. I'm actually 0.1 above in Z when I was jogging around. But again, pay attention to that status because you've got to be really careful that you aren't assuming you're in the wrong coordinate system. And you can now see the preview in PathPilot that shows what's right. Now, again, this happens to be a simple situation where I've got G55 4.25 inches to the right, but it could be anywhere. Now I pull it out here because we just don't tap at the machine very often. I have a tension compression head. They work fine, especially for through holes, but I just always tap offline. I, I just do. Yeah, I, even in the Haas, a lot of times I end up pulling parts out unless I happen to have that tap already set up. Screwing the fixtures down, I wasn't sure just how much deflection I'd have, so I wanted to check. Now, I, the downside of this is I did have to refine my zero. Seriously, not a big deal with the Heimer. Uh, to me, it's easier to do that than to set up the tapping head and just risk, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that. So I'm in G54. I'm gonna find my left edge and set that to zero. Now, G55, and I'll just type that at the current location, I'm 4.25 inches off from my G54 to get to my G55. Now, here's what's really good. Do a sanity check, go into offsets, click on the work tab and take a look. Your Y and your Z should be identical because they're the same. Your back edge is the same and the Z height is the same, but your X's will be different. And the difference between those two numbers, if you subtracted the 6.19 uh, or 1.94 out of that would be 4.25. Let's take a look at the Fusion Cam for this. Relatively straightforward. We've got a 2D adaptive walking around the part. What's really important in this is that you check stock contours. That way it sees the size of the stock that you've defined in your setup and that gives you the necessary lines or distance to cut to make sure you've got a good toolpath. I didn't run this quite as hard because I wasn't sure how rigid this fixture was. It actually turned out great. 10,000 RPMs, two thou per tooth, which is 40 inches a minute, full depth of cut, only 40 thou uh, optimal load, and we're leaving five thou on the wall to come back with a 2D contour to walk around it. Notice I've got a finishing overlap here. Notice I've got a finishing overlap here that way we don't have a lead in, lead out mark. You do that by going into your passes tab and adding a 50 thou finishing overlap. I don't think we have clearance. Let's go check. 370. 
To check if we've got clearance for the chamfer, I modeled up the screw head, which is a 3 8 inch diameter circle, and we made it about uh, 0.4 inches high. The height's not actually that important. That lets me do in KM, I've got the chamfer, and you can see I've got it offset quite a bit. If you go to edit, the fourth tab passes, you can see I've got the chamfer tip offset of 0.1 inches. And if I turn the screw head on here in the cam side, you can see it right there. So what I'll do now, I'll click on that chamfer, simulate, turn the screw head back on. And what I can do, if I sometimes it's easier to click show points, and that gives me these black points. Those are transition points in the G-code. But by clicking on one, what I'll now do is left click and hold down on the mouse. And I can scrub through and get to a point where I like it and see as I walk around that, I've got clearance between the side of the tool and the screw head should be fine. Since we've done all the adaptive hard work, I can take these fasteners out and we can go ahead and chamfer uh, the inside here as well. I was making a mistake, my so long machine chamfering so gentle, especially on aluminum. You can go, man. So I'm going uh, 10,000 at 105 inches a minute, really no problem at all. Turned out great. Voila! Sorry for the hybrid machining where we machine both aluminum and steel at the same time. You would think I would have learned by now that when you add screws to the top of your part as clamp hold downs, you should lift your height planes in Fusion 360 to avoid rapid collisions. Tool actually held up pretty darn well though. Kind of funny enough. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. Take care. See you next Wednesday.